Yeah. Get him another shot. I don't understand what you're doing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays, except for this video. I'm your host, Adam Paddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And today, guys, we're actually going to be doing our off-season breakdowns and projections for what we think the AL East teams are going to do, minus the Toronto Blue Jays, because we're going to have our own separate video looking at that. So we're going Yankees, Rays, Red Sox, Orioles, the whole shebang with all those guys. Before we get into it, though, please make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Do the whole thing. All right, dude. Last time we did, a, I think it was AL Central. Yes, uh, sir. And we started with the top. So let's do that again. This past uh, year, Tampa Bay Rays, they were sitting right at the top. Uh, they were a lot of people. World Series picks. Mm -hmm. That did not happen. Mm -hmm. um, not yours, though. Not yours, though. No, definitely not mine. Definitely not mine. Uh, I, I still don't understand how they did as well <laughs> as they did. Uh, I will once again probably underrate them and, uh, and bet the under coming into next year. But... Looking, uh, maybe, maybe a good offseason. Maybe a good offseason <laughs> from them will change my mind. <laughs> well, um, Do you think that they're going to have a good and successful offseason? Well, I was going to ask you, what do you qualify as uh, a good offseason? I mean, a good offseason, I guess you could say, like how we determine it is how well did the guys do that you picked up? Uh, whereas what I'm looking at right now for the Tampa Bay Rays is they don't usually have typical off seasons for mm. these teams that are trying to buy because the Tampa Bay Rays do not buy. They're sitting at 93 million expected to be 116 million this year with all their other projections and everything like that. Taxes and what have it. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're losing Cruz, Archer, Waka, but in guys that they're going to get, there's not going to be many names because the Tampa Bay Rays are one of the lowest payrolls in all of baseball and yeah. they'll continue to be that. And that's not going to change. So for you, Nick, what do you have them doing? And I'll kind of give you what I have. Well, them I mean, doing. I think that um, like not a lot, guys, uh, they have almost no active contracts like they have Kiermaier and then like almost nobody else. Everybody yeah. is like arbitration, like pre arb or, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things. Um, so realistically, what I see the Tampa Bay Rays doing if you know, history holds true. I think I could see them looking, maybe going to get some like cheap, underrated batters that like we're not talking about. The Yankees aren't talking about, but they're mathematical nerds upstairs are like, hey, he gets on base and does really good stuff. Like we think we could work with him or similarly something in the bullpen esque area like that, you know, like some cheap guys that we're not looking at, but they are, and uh, and they think that they can make something out of nothing. But it's not going to be your your massive, you know, Knebels or, uh, no, or freaking no. Chris Bryant or anything they don't even like have, that. They don't know? even have enough money to even get Kniebel, and no, he's relatively really. decently cheap compared to yeah. a lot of relievers out there. And, like, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I think they're going to make a lot of pitching moves because they are losing Archer and Waka. Waka wasn't that great. Archer was a flop, and, yeah, they're going to let Cruz go. There's no way they're going to get Cruz mm -hmm. back. I, uh, here's an option, and I, I don't know if I believe in this option, but here's an option and hear me out. Mm. They might cut Zanino because they have a team option. It's only $4 million for mm. the team option, but... They might just do it because I've seen some weird things in the past where at the time I was like, OK, that's weird. Like trading Rich Hill right. to the New York Mets. That didn't make sense, but it worked. Rich Hill ended up flopping. I, I, now, granted, Zanino's hit do 33. Do you know who they overs. have at catcher after yes, that? Yes, Mejia. And he's super cheap. Super and uh, cheap, but, okay. but again, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. OK, he had 33 home runs last year with 62 RBIs. It's only 4 million. Too, it's only 4 right? million. Like, but, to, you know, again, I've seen some weird things. But for me, with their main main offseason moves, yeah. They're going to grab somebody like last year, Archer, maybe has one year left in the mm -hmm. tank and maybe they can figure him out, do a little project, a little math on project. Him, you know, and like, yeah. you know, maybe maybe you work something out where it's like, okay, you're only exclusively throwing sliders now. Maybe, maybe and, Jay and Happ. that's it, so. Maybe Jay Happ. Maybe Jay Happ. Maybe Jay Happ. Yeah, potentially, potentially for <laughs> sure, not? you know. <laughs> that's that's it, could, man. Could definitely happen. Uh, I could also see too, and, and I don't think that this is going to happen, but um, because he's so hurt right now, but I know that some race fans were kind of calling for maybe looking at a glass now extension but because he's kind of like dead right now and like did not finish last year it's kind of difficult to do that because if you're tyler glass now now is not the time to be signing a long-term extension and if you're the tampa bay rays he's injured do you really want to lock this guy up for like six seven eight however yeah. many years right and if i'm tyler glass now do 
I really want to get the extension that the Rays are going to offer me? Because it's not going to be that high. And I, yes, if I was well, Tampa Bay Rays, well, sure. But look at what they did with Kiermaier. You know, yeah, and, and that's well, that was, the. That was a good but deal. that's it. That's the. Oh, but that, that, that's the thing. They don't have much room to give more deals than mm. Kevin Kiermaier. Mm. They just like don't have that flexibility. That's why they're always the lowest in the payroll. So they they're gonna if they're gonna offer him something, it's gonna be low. Probably. And it's probably the right time to do it if you are Tampa Bay Rays because you're gonna get him a lot cheaper when he's on the IL with mm. cover covering from Tommy John. You yeah. Know? Either way, folks, uh, not a lot is uh, is truly the the boiled down answer here. They have a good team. They have some bats that are going to do really good. A Rosarina, Wander Franco. They have dudes that are going to be studs, and they're probably just going to ride with them and maybe make some small little like adjustments in the bullpen and whatnot. Maybe bring some minor league guys up, but we don't probably. expect too too much. Uh, moving on, it's the uh, Boston Red Sox, I mm-hmm. do believe. Yes, sir. Uh, and and they're definitely going to do a lot more than the Tampa Bay Rays, or at least we project them to. They went pretty bloody far, uh, way further than we thought, way further than a lot of people thought. I truly wanted them to beat those Houston Astros and, and represent the AL East, even though they are division rivals. Mm-hmm. It would be kind of nice that, you know, somebody's representing the division. But mm-hmm. either way... They got a little bit more money to play around with. They're a big market team. What do you think the Boston Red Sox are going to do? Well, I think they got to go get some starting pitching, guys. Big it is time. so freaking clear. Big I time. mean, they they did manage with their starting pitching, obviously getting to the wild card and winning and moving on. I still on. don't understand, though. I don't understand. Well, here, well, here's the beautiful thing about the Boston Red Sox. Okay, yeah, they have $33 million to kind of play with in mm-hmm. their payroll. However, they can make that $50 million by cutting some starting pitching. And you're probably wondering, like, wait a minute. Why would you be cutting starting pitching? Well, because you're cutting guys like Richards and pa- oh, sorry, not uh, Richards and Perez. Martin mm. Perez and Richards both had a 487 and a 474 ERA. Mm. Now, they might cost about Perez $6 million. He's got a team option. So if they don't pick up that team mm. option, you're saving $6 million. Richards is $10 million. Mm. If you don't pick up those options, you gain an extra $16 million. So now you're getting yeah. close to fifty. I would say right? I would say that the $10 million for sure is probably a no-go. $6 million maybe if you think like... Maybe. You know, I mean, like that was... Uh, like Robbie Ray, for instance, pitched for a 6 ERA in 2020. We paid him right. $8 million to come back, and then he was Cy Young. I'm not saying that that's right, what uh, right, Perez right. or Richards are going to do. Right, but. and this is thing. It's like, I don't know what they're going to do, but those are options, right? Yep. You can make some... You can make almost 50, up to $50 million worth of cap space. Now, there's some pitchers out there that are going to be wanting about 20, 25, mm-hmm. somewhere in that range, average annual value per year, like Gosman, Stroman, Scherzer. Now, mm-hmm. what I think they should do is pick up one of those guys. Now, Gosman might deserve a longer contract, but that's okay because you have a Valdi who's on his last year coming into this year, mm-hmm. and uh, JD Martinez who, who has a, a player option coming. Got a player into this option. Year. I think that you know? he'll probably pick it up too. He will definitely. It's, it's on the it's on the cusp. But like you could argue, like maybe he could get more money because I think I think it's ranging at about the twenty million dollar range. I believe it's like. 18, 19 million yeah. for his uh, his player uh, option. Yeah, yeah, 19. Um, uh, but it's like realistically, I think he'd, he'd want to stick with the squad and yeah. like 19 million dollars. I don't know if you're gonna get more than that, like guaranteed for like many more years to come. So he'll probably stick with them for at least one more year, and then you're right, he'll be off the books. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that they do need to keep in mind as well, um, like this team, they've kind of they got a solid foundation. They have Xander Bogarts locked down forever. Uh, they have some young guys as well in Verdugo, in Dahlbeck, and most especially in Raphael Devers. So whatever they do, and I do think that they have enough money and flexibility to go along with this, but they just need to make sure that they're saving a little bit or or structuring their contracts in a way where in a year or in two years, uh, they they get that extension going for Raphael Devers. Because yeah. I believe he's a, he's a year ahead right now, or maybe even two years ahead of a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So that should be yeah. coming relatively soon yeah. if they're going to extend him. And hey, so let's say, you, you, did you say that they still paying for David Price? Or, you told me earlier. I believe that they still, for next year, uh, yeah. correct me in the chat, guys, uh, but I think that they still need to pay $16 million for David Price Okay, well, year. there you go. That's $16 million that you're going to get. Which will be off the books in like a year In the two. year. He's off the books. Uh, then it'll be JD off the books. And then, yeah, uh, Valdi will be off the books, right? So it, I bet with those three guys off the books, you can definitely extend Devers mm. and get 
a solid pitcher like a Gosman. Yep. Probably, or a Strowman. Probably. I, I think that they need to be in the conversations for all of like the deep pitchers, mm -hmm. uh, which sucks for Blue Jays fan because, I mean, we're obviously going to be going after them too. But what playoff team doesn't want to get more rotational help? Boston Red Sox, that is what we're going to be looking for mm -hmm. you guys to do in the offseason. Uh, speaking of rotational help, the New York Yankees. Um, they need it as well, man. Uh, yeah. This needs to be one of their key concerns. That, along with a big-time shortstop, second baseman sort of thing, like ever, all the rumors have been saying. Uh, but for me, it, it's especially the the starting pitching. What do you have for the New York Yankees? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree with you with the starting pitching. I think they're going to be in on some key starting pitching guys. Robbie Ray, Stroman, like the guys that we, they've kind of been rumored around. Mm -hmm. Scherzer, I would not be surprised. Wouldn't be shocked. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. But I also think they're going to go after a shortstop. I think they've Gla been saying it. They've I think, been saying it. I think Glaber Torres is done in New York. You And here's this, even a tricky thing. You might even see some roster maneuvers. I wouldn't be shocked if Glaber Torres got left if they got if he got shipped off. So make some room and got someone like Corey Seager. Maybe, maybe. I wouldn't I, be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked either. I don't know if they're quite at that point yet, but um, yeah, no. More realistically, Glaber Torres is going to move over to second. Yeah, and then and they'd sign. I think they're going to sign someone like either Story, one of the big guys, Story, Sammy, and Sh um, Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa. And uh, and um, oh my gosh, what's the other Seager. one? Seager. Seager, thank yeah. you. No, I mean they're they're yeah. definitely they're gonna be in on one of them. Uh, and there's no way that the management is gonna let these New York Yankees leave without acquiring one. And I think that that's stellar for them. Like, go get your guy, whatever. But I mean, if I was the management, I truly believe that like the the pinpoint needs to be put more on the starting pitching. And I think that they are, like you said, going to be in that conversation. So expect these Yankee fans to definitely be targeting, like you said, Stroman and Ray mm -hmm. and all those guys. Also, Rizzo is gone right yeah. now, so they could have the potential. I read up on the Yankees uh, page. Basically, they were saying, we want to get Rizzo back. Now, I don't really understand this no. because you still have Luke Voigt there. And he's on arbitration. It's just like every single person, including the management in New York, freaking hates Luke Voigt. And they were like, we need to extend Rizzo and we need to trade Luke Voigt. And I, I just think that that's making it so much more complicated. Yeah, than you it don't needs need to, to do be. that because Rizzo's going to command dollars. If kid, look, I know you're New York Yankees and you spend, you spend, you spend. But guys, you're this is the so they did get under the luxury tax last year, but they're going to be over it this year, It'll projected again, wise. Yeah. So that you got to do anything you can to save a dollar. Luke Voigt is a home run hitter. Yes, Anthony Rizzo was great, but Luke Voigt, he's back. He's healthy. Yeah. Get him another shot. I don't understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. You have enough bats, especially if you get someone like Corey Seager or Correa Story Semyon. That's fine. That's fine, guys. Yeah, so, yeah. no, I think they're definitely, they should focus more on the starting rotation. And they're going to be losing Zach Britton this year, a little Coles note. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you, maybe pick someone up. Mm -hmm. else up. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, no. So definitely, like, they are going to get a big shortstop and they're probably going to get another massive starting mm -hmm. pitcher as well. And if they do that, then they're going to be, you know, a top and three team in baseball once hot, again. Hot take, they trade Torres. That, I, I read that from a New York article. <laughs> well, hot, hot, take. hot take: they extend Rizzo and trade Voigt. You oh, know, like God, God only like fucking knows, God. man. Like God. it's it's all Who madness. Knows? It's Who madness. Knows? All right, oh. last team uh, we're gonna be looking at is the Baltimore Orioles. Um, these guys sucked last year. They were so pretty bad. bad. Twenty uh, third ranked offense, thirtieth ranked pitching. Horrible. Um, it's just it's all garbage, guys. I don't expect them to do a whole lot this off season. Uh, no. What I do expect them to do, though, is to make room so they have their prospects come up because they have five in the top 100, and some of them are really highly touted. You got Rutschman, you got some other pitchers mm -hmm. like that are ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's not like they're spending a lot of money anyways. Like Mullins, he's still pre-arb right now. Yeah. Dude. He's still pre-arb. It's like yeah. you got maybe you consider extending Mancini, but... Yeah, I don't well, know. That'd be it. The, really? The, yeah, that's the thing. It's like you you actually have the flexibility to offer some young guys some money. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you could you could 
offer Mullins money this offseason if you really wanted to. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. No, that's he's pre-R. I don't think it's going to happen. No, no, no. Not, but like, you could if you wanted to. Is that's what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm, like he's mm-hmm. like you're that much financial flexibility. Like mm-hmm. you're get, you have 80 million with taxes and benefits all included in that. Like you have 129 million dollars to play with mm-hmm. according to Sport Rack. So yeah, get Rutschman up, and then this is what I want them to do in the mm-hmm. offseason: go sign some guys that have played in the year in the MLB for 10 plus years. Years. Go get Jay Happ. Go get Albert Pujols. Mm-hmm. Go get Rich Hill. Like, don't get too many starting pitching though, because you do have like Rodriguez, Hall, Bradish, who are all starting pitchers. So, you know, go get some guys to show some veteran leadership. Like, you're gonna lose again this year. Just call up your prospects and learn. I've also it should heard, be a class. Also heard too. It's like from from some Baltimore Orioles fans that they're looking to get some short term deals on some infield because they don't have a whole lot of infield going on there. Um, so so if that's the case, what we did with Marcus Simeon last year, I think would be ideal for you guys to do this Why year. Why not? You know, like get a guy who has some actual upside, um, but is looking to, to prove it for one or two years. He's not at that point in his career where he can, he can sign the massive five to six year deal, but he wants to. So what is he going to do first? He's going to get a one year deal going put up some numbers with you guys and then go screw off and make his money elsewhere, you know, but that'd be perfect for yeah. you right now. This guy isn't the Marcus Simeon coming mm. into this class, but this guy, uh, Andrelton Simmons is mm. a great defensive shortstop. He can have a bat, you know, he can be pretty good with the bat too. He's not going to, he's not going to wow anything. He's not going to be proving it looking for a big deal. But I think like you said, like he's a guy who can, put up and like compete right. and like just be a veteran guy like yeah just man like Baltimore like you're so close mm-hmm. like you're so close to getting out not like it's compared to the whole like timeline if you're rebuild you are close to getting out of this yeah you just a few more years just a like few more years throw it into the trash and, bag and, 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 I, and I also I also said to maybe look at a Mancini extension and maybe actually do that because right now he's on his arb three coming into this year this will be the last year of Mancini unless you guys look at potentially extending him so this is a guy that's yeah, been no. with your team for a long time Sign he's him. still got some years left you still have some money maybe just lock him down and have that veteran Baltimore yeah. Oriole presence be there on the team exactly. I can only imagine that he's an exceptional locker room presence exactly he, he's got to be the heart and soul of this team I mean we all know the story of him beating cancer mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. this guy has got to be a Baltimore Oriole for you know what? Fuck it. For life. You right? should be a Baltimore Oriole for life you and know? be around when the team is making their way back yeah, into contention. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's like I could totally see this guy at like 34, 35 years yeah. old. And it's like now Baltimore is like serious contenders. Like yeah. we're like in the playoff race because it's like they got Rutschman and all their prospects and Mullins is still good and Mountcastle is still good. And, mm-hmm. and this other guy that they signed that we didn't even realize is good now. So, I mean, this is a team that you're not going to see be crazy this offseason, but they're going to make some smart moves and uh and mm-hmm. yeah hopefully they're on some short deals yeah. sometimes a smart move isn't the biggest move mm-hmm. it's the little ones that mm-hmm. count yeah right. but guys that is our video on the al east and what we think their off seasons are going to look like. please comment down below what you thought about this and uh and you what you think uh any of these teams should do uh if we got it right or if uh, you have any ideas then uh, please let us know guys you can also check us out on spotify google podcast anchor radio public and breaker also please check us out on our other platforms like instagram twitter and tiktok like comment subscribe to stay up to date with everything off season and the toronto blue Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. And also, guys, this video is brought to you by Monkey Knife Fight and Manscaped. Use the code today, Jays, to get discounts at deals that you saw throughout this entire video. And guys, become a patron. It's only $3 a month, and you can come onto our show, our Wine Unwind, and chat with us. We, we haven't had one in a while. No, we haven't no, had one we in a while. We haven't, we haven't. Guys, these guys up these here guys, yeah. can all come on to our Wine Unwind and chat with us. So if you want to join them and join us, Become a Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, folks. And go, Go Jays, go! go!